From beautiful Wrigley Field where the Cubs and Yankees matched up in the 32 and 38 World Series were set for Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN Sports Interleague action tonight. We welcome Cub fans from all over the country watching on WGN America America's home for baseball. Great to have you with us tonight. It's hot. The wind is blowing out. Might be an offensive night. The pitchers will have a lot to say about that. Jim Deshays and Len Casper. Let's talk about the Yankees. Three over 500. A half game lead in the American League East. Yeah, it's been an up and down year for the Yankees so far. They've won four out of their last five primarily because a very good starting pitcher, including the man we'll see tonight, Masahiro Tanaka, who's been a big, big story not only in New York but all over the Major League Baseball. They're having a hard time scoring runs, and they are banged up. Yep, three fifths of their opening day rotation currently on the disabled list. We talked about Derek Jeter on the pregame show. He's in the lineup tonight. So is Alfonso Soriano playing right field tonight with Carlos Beltran also on the shelf. Jason Hamill gets the nod for the Cubs coming off his first non quality start of the year. Yeah, struggled a little bit last time out against St. Louis in his start in New York against the Yankees. It was against Tanaka. He pitched very well, seven innings. Five hits, three runs, but it was a day in which the Cubs were shut out in both ends of a day-night doubleheader. Hamill 2-0 and against the Yankees last year in three starts while a member of the Baltimore Orioles. And I guess the Cubs will try to make history tonight. Masahiro Tanaka, J.D., and this is actually right. 34 straight decisions have resulted in wins going back to his time in Japan. Yeah, covering 42 starts. He hasn't lost since August of 2012. He has struck out 66 this year while walking only seven. Just unbelievable stuff. And we saw him at his best in that start at Yankee Stadium back on the 16th. Yeah, got to get him to get that splitter up in the strike zone with the wind blowing out tonight. A lot of Yankee fans here as New York will spend the entire week in the Windy City. After this two-gamer, they'll play the White Sox on the south side. We have game one of this series coming up next. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best selling brand. Check out our best selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Chicago Cubs baseball coast to coast in high definition on WGN TV is brought to you by Xfinity. Infinity, your home for the most live sports. 
Well, it was uh, 38 on uh, Friday as we started this homestand, and it was 43, and a, I would say a cold 43 when uh, the Cubs and the Yankees matched up on April 15th in New York. We've doubled that, 85 degrees here tonight. Let's get the Yankees starting lineup written out by former Chicago Cub Joe Girardi. Brett Gardner is in left. Derek Jeter batting second. Jacoby Ellsbury is the center fielder. Mark Teixeira did not play in that two-game series. He was on the disabled list. Brian McCann, the catcher. Alfonso Soriano is in right. We're used to seeing him in left. Jan Hervis Solarte off to a great start. The rookie, a fifth in the American League in batting. We didn't see Brian Roberts. He was day-to-day -day with a back issue in April. And Tanaka, the pitcher, will hit ninth. Well, let's check out the Cubs defensively here this evening. An outfield of Lake Bonifacio and Sheerholtz, who has seen his playing time uh, reduced here of late, needs to get on track. Olt Castro, Valbuena, Rizzo, third to first. John Baker, he's been paired with Jason Hamill, and he is again this evening. Hamill taking the mound for the ninth time. He's 4-2 and two with an ERA of 3.06. Eight starts, seven of them really, really good. Shaky last time out against the Cardinals. And you see that whip still among the best in baseball, 0 0.91. Opponent's OPS glittering, his strikeout rate solid. Walk numbers are good. Right handed hitters are hitting just a buck 61 against Jason Hamill. That's Lance Barrett. The uh, home plate umpire, Dana DeMuth, is the crew chief. Ron Culpa at second, and Ed Hickox at third. Look at that beautiful shot. The iconic scoreboard and near dusk here in Chicago. We hope to dodge the rain tonight. That's the kind of shot that inspires poetry, Len. <laughs> You're on the clock. Oh, I'm on the clock. Brett Gardner is on the clock as he takes a fastball at 93 from Jason Hamill, but it's up and out of the zone to get us started. Gardner's hot. He's 10 for his last 26. Got a four year extension in February. Ground ball knocked down by Hamill. He's got to hurry, and it's late. And Hamill might be hurt, and he's shaking his pitching hand. That's not a good sign. No, you're hoping that it was just off the, the leg, but yeah, I got a piece of his right hand. It's a play as a pitcher. You tell yourself not to panic. Sometimes you have to be a little more urgent than he was with a guy like Gardner going down the line. Unfortunate start to this ball game is that comebacker obviously gets a piece of the pitching hand of Jason Hamill. Ed Halber, one of the Cubs athletic trainers, taking a look at that hand. The grimace by Hamill is not good. Trying to hide it, but. That one stung. We're checking all the digits and pressing on various spots. Boy, that's tricky, isn't it? Even if he says he feels good. Well, that, and that's the thing. I mean, you, you can get away if you got a little bit of a. You know, bruised muscle, a sore shin, or you know, you can get away with a lot of things. But as a pitcher, if you've got a bruised hand and you can't grip the ball properly, it's just not going to work out. Uh -huh. mm. That pretty much says it, doesn't it? He's going to ask for another ball, but I think, uh, yeah, Rick Renteria, I think, is already asking for a reliever. Ooh. Scrambling down in the bullpen. Lester Strode is on the phone with Chris Bosio. What you want to do here? There you go. That, that looked a heck of a lot better. And you want to make sure you throw a breaking ball or two, and he's not going to. But that would be the one concern that, that there was something going on with some part of his hand or a finger where he couldn't throw his breaking ball properly. That would really hit him in a tough spot.
Nice ovation for Derek Jeter as you heard him talk about on the pregame show. He played here in 03 but was injured the last time the Yankees were here in 2011. And a check on Gardner at first. Uh, Gardner will run. He's stolen 10 bases. He has not been caught yet. Another throw over there. Brought up an interesting note as we were looking at the all time hit leaders. Derek Jeter is listed as eighth on the all time list as he bunts toward third. It's a beauty, barehanded by Alt. The throw in time, they got him. What a play by Mike Alt. Took a perfect play, and that's exactly what Alt engineered to get one of his heroes. Jeter will get credit for a sacrifice, but he had bigger things in mind dropping down that perfect bun and Rizzo able to avoid contact come across the baseline and catch that throw from Alt to get Jeter. Nice play and good concentration by Rizzo. Joe Girardi is going to come out and chat with Dana DeMuth. Might he challenge this? He shouldn't. This is what we, we need to have. We need to gain, gather audio um, for these manager conversations with umpires when they're waiting for a decision as to whether to challenge or not. Right. You know, it's kind of best of managers killing time. So here comes Jacoby Ellsbury with Gardner now at second. Just to finish the thought, Jeter with 3,353 hits. Uh, listed as eighth on the all time list, but that does not include Cap Anson. So we can say Jeter is eighth on the all time modern day list. Anson with over 3,400 hits most of his career with this Cubs franchise back in the 1800s. Junior Lake and left will make the grab. Two down. We'll bring up one of their three switch hitters. Mark Teixeira, the first baseman. That's a, a very flexible roster that Joe Girardi has in terms of having a lot of options from both sides of the plate. Three switch hitters in the lineup tonight. One more on the bench. So he can stack his lineup left or right. Leads their club with those nine home runs, even though he's missed 14 games. And a called strike. Always good to see Joe back at Wrigley Field. From Peoria, went to Northwestern. A couple of stints in his career as a Cub. Shara checked his swing and fouled. Much better from this side of the plate for Teixeira. Eight of his nine home runs. And no doubt a lot more plate appearances from this side, but the, the rate stats better as a left handed hitter as well. Kicked the 0 2 and bounced foul to the pull side. Behind another former Cub, Mick Kelleher. There's Mick. Missed up and outside. Well, we'll keep an eye on that throwing hand of Jason Hamill, first batter of the game, Gardner, and a hard hit grounder that caught part of his pitching hand. 
And recover here and get out of the first with no damage. Two and two. Yeah, that's always the fear with a pitcher injury that because of an ailment, you uh, change your delivery a little bit, change your grip, and put undue pressure on the shoulder or the elbow. And those are your money makers as a pitcher. Kick the 2 2, and he just hit to Shara. And would look to be a slider. Yeah, trying to bury that slider down and in, see if he can get a swing over the top from Teixeira. It's commonly referred to as the back foot slider. Literally is a back foot slider. You can see, look at that. You yeah, can you see, see the, the seam, threads of yeah. the ball. Yeah. It looks a little swelling there, too. So that's something that obviously they're we'll take a look at when he gets in at the end of this half inning. If that swells up, tightens up, he won't be able to continue. Oh yeah, you can see that. Puffy there, huh? Yep. Here's the catcher, Brian McCann, former Atlanta Brave, and he Fouls off for strike one. Got a five year free agent contract over the winter. Only catcher to hit 20 homers each of the last six consecutive seasons. He's got six through 38 games this year. Even in an off year, he should be able to put up some pretty good home run numbers in Yankee Stadium. Lefty sluggers can really exploit that short porch in right field, but overall he has struggled and saw that low batting average. His career average 50 points better, 275. And that ball got away from Baker. Gardner belly flops into third. Teixeira held it first. And the real advantage to be gained there would have been Teixeira moving up into scoring position. He did not get the, the break, the reaction, nor does he have the speed that Gardner has. And he was pretty much set in stone down there at first base. He didn't even take a secondary lead with that pitch being delivered. Two balls and a strike on McCann. The kick, the pitch. And seemed to handcuff Baker, three and one. Ooh. You will not get high marks for artistic merit. The perils of the headfirst slide. Three one yanked foul. Well, you know, this is an interesting predicament that Jason Hamels in. I don't know exactly what's going on, how he feels with his hand right now, but you got Tanaka pitching for the Yankees tonight. And this guy's given up nothing. Um, so, you know, this game could be decided here in the first inning. Teixeira will get a head start here. Soriano on deck. The 3 2 is hit in the air to center. It'll be Bonifacio to make the catch. And that ends the inning. A painful one, but a scoreless one for Hamill.
14 Mazda 3 was seamless connectivity Bonifacio Lake Rizzo at the top Castro hot here as of late Valbuena and the struggling Nate Sherholtz in the middle Mike Holt nine homers leading all National League rookies Baker and Hamill as they often do forming the Cubs battery and the Yankees defensively Gardner Ellsbury and Soriano left center right Fonzie's a little out of place out there all those Years with the Cubs and always in left field, but right field tonight for the Yankees. Solarte, Solarte, excuse me, Derek Jeter making his 2,581st start at shortstop, trailing only Omar Vizcal and Luis Aparicio in games played at short. Brian Roberts, the second sacker, big mark to share there at first, and Brian McCann, the veteran behind the plate for Masahiro Tanaka. He's 25 years of age and he's really good. 6 0, 2.18 ERA. At, uh, Strikeout to walk ratio is otherworldly. He has allowed seven home runs if you're looking for a little chink in the armor. And whip like Hamill, really, really good. The difference between his strikeout rate and his walk rate, second best in baseball to Jose Fernandez. And a first pitch strike on the switch hitting Bonifacio. So that's that's the bad news if you're a Cub fan. The good news is, as Len alluded to earlier, that the Cubs are getting their second look at him and chance to make some adjustments. Inside that time, he's not. One. He's not a hard thrower. His average fastball, right around 91 miles an hour. But he'll cut it. He's got a curveball, a changeup, and that split finger pitch is his best weapon. He throws it hard, about 87. Won't turn 26 until the November 1st. That ball is bounced foul. That's what made him so attractive. Not only. His stuff, his success, but his age. Just don't find guys of his caliber at his age available essentially on the free market. Well, yeah, unless they, uh, you know, if they came into the big leagues when they were 18 and got their six years in, become a free agent at 24. But those guys, well, one, they're few and far between. The guys that make it at a very young age, and, and the big league clubs are locking those guys up. That's a beautiful cumulus cloud. It is. Hot, humid night, wind blowing out. Ground ball to Brian Roberts. Whip it good. Here's your lowest whip leaders. Cueto's been unbelievable. Hudson, man, he just keeps on going, doesn't he? Yep. Wow. And then the two guys working here tonight, Jason Hamill and Tanaka. Hudson now at San Francisco. Hudson missed his last start, by the way, with a strained hip. He will be in San Francisco next week. 1 0 on Junior Lake. He's been hot. 355 over his last 10 games with nine knocked in. He had one of the two hits for the Cubs against Tanaka back in the middle of April at Yankee Stadium. The plate. It's three and zero. Oh. Tweet us your Cubs selfies at hashtag WGN Cubs. I guess that's kind of a Yankee selfie. I don't think Derek took that, but the stage manager Paula Ascrova sitting next to Derek may have taken that. Yankees have a shift on here for Lake. They do a lot of shifting. Girardi's a big believer. Tanaka back in it now. Three and two the count.
Anthony Rizzo on deck. Pitch. Call strike three on a borderline pitch. It apparently caught the outside corner. Lance Barrett made the call. Junior not very agreeable right now. <laughs> you know, Junior swings and misses so often, and here he's trying to show a little discipline laying off this pitch. And just just pitch. catch the uh, outside corner, yeah. He's trying to sell it with the bat flip. So yeah, that's outside. Here's Rizzo two down. Nobody on in the opening inning. Notice where Solarte was playing at third. On that first pitch he was in on the grass. They shift against him. Jeter almost behind second base, but the third baseman was pulled way in after watching Rizzo lay down once for hits twice last week in St. Louis. Yeah, and he did it in New York too. I don't know if it was off Tanaka, but he, he dropped one down in the doubleheader against the Yankees. So they're taking that away now with two strikes. Solarte will back up. Nothing in two. The pitch is low. Among the league leaders in walks, he's got that high on base percentage. See those slugging numbers go up as the weather heats up. Swing and a miss. Tanaka goes one, two, three with two punch outs in the first. Well, a nice hand for Alfonso Soriano from the Wrigley Field crowd. Back here for the first time since he was traded by the Cubs to the Yankees. I guess I would say polite applause. Hamill back out there. Obviously the hand is well enough for him to continue. That breaking ball got away from him. Ball one. Now those guys are out in left as you said most of his cup career was spent in left a little bit in center right at the beginning as he hits one high in the air. Bonifacio is going to have room Wynn still pushing it back near the warning track for the out. Boy, was, did he get on a tear when he got traded or what. Oh yeah he's 17 it up. homers. 
after the deal in late July. Led the major leagues over that span. Wasn't enough to get the Yankees into the playoffs, however. No, the Yankees uh, finished out of the postseason with 85 wins, their lowest win total in a full season since 1992. Was the second time in the last 19 years since 95 they had missed the playoffs. 2008, the only other. Another switch hitter, Solarte, and a strike on the inside corner. 0 and 2. So they open up the uh, checking account. McCann, Ellsbury, Tanaka. They are not, and first time in a while, that they do not have the biggest payroll in baseball. That's the Dodgers. Still up over 200 million for the Yankees. Well, they've got Beltran, Sabathia, among others on the disabled list, and A Rod suspended for the season. Swing and a miss, strike three. Cup fans, if you want to manage the game along with Rick Renteria, log on to WGNTV.com right now. And click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner there. You'll connect to all the up-to-the-minute stats and information while you're watching from home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape. They have pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. And it is officially summer. Just like that, boom. One day. Yep. Or at least it's summer for a day. Starting to fill in. We had to uh, replace some because of some brickwork and left over the offseason. Two strikes on Brian Roberts, longtime Oriole, facing his former Baltimore teammate, Jason Hamill. Swing and a miss, strike three. Hamill looks fine. Two strikeouts and a one, two, three second. And Joint Institute. A little update on Justin Ruggiano. He works his way back. He's on a rehab assignment down at Iowa, and he went two for three yesterday. He works his way back from that left hamstring strain. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute helping you move better so you could live better. Visit IBJI.com. Cubs batting in the bottom of the second in a scoreless tie. Cubs trying to score against the Yankees at all for the first time this year. They were 
shut out in a double header in mid April on a chilly day and night in the Bronx. The Yankees have four shutouts. They've all come against the National League two against the Cubs and two last week against the Mets. Swing and a miss. Tanaka born in Itami, Hiago, Japan. That ball hit hard, but right at Jeter by the guy who handed him a piece of that scoreboard before the game. Nice moment, Castro and Jeter together at home plate. Oh, hanging something here from Tanaka. It was a splitter or maybe just a hanging fastball, but it sat there for Castro. He blistered it, but unfortunately, right to his uh, counterpart there at short. Luis Valbuena getting his 10th start at second. He's made 18 starts over at third as well. And he drives that one out in the deep right. Soriano back on the warning track. It's off the wall. Soriano gets it back in quickly, but it's a double. Well, two good swings to get the second inning started here for the Cubs. The Castro line out in Valbuena. A double off the wall. Boy, I thought this one was going to leave the yard when he hit it. Looked like a home run swing. Just didn't quite get enough of it. He's there with one out, and it'll bring up Nate Sherholtz. Tanaka from the stretch for the first time tonight. And the pitch caught the outside corner. Sometimes complicate this game more than we should, but when it comes to, to success on the mound, stuff certainly matters, but more than that's the ability to put the ball where you want to. <laughs> certainly against the Cubs, Tanaka has been able to do that. And based on his record, he's done it here the first six weeks of the season. He'll pick it up and tag Sherholtz for the out. The 1930s celebration continues for one more game tomorrow afternoon. The Cubs finish out the homestand with a 120 start against these Yankees. Don't miss your chance to see Derek Jeter's final regular season game here at Wrigley Field. Limited tickets are still available, so visit Cubs.com today. Chase Whitley, a rookie, will face Jeff Samarja. Mike Alt with a runner third and two outs. I think we did this last year, JD. We you know, reminded fans if you want to know about a pitcher and if he's on or not, just watch the catcher's mitt throughout the night and see how much it moves. Yeah, yeah. Swing and a miss. Yeah, and then this is a the challenge for the Cub hitters is, is to try to recognize and lay off that split finger pitch and that's obviously easier said than done when you look at the numbers on Tanaka you understand that nobody's been able to do that so far. And he went. 
for Tanaka's third strikeout, all of the swinging variety. for corporate gatherings, family reunions, and bachelor or bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games. For more details, go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Third inning, Tanaka will lead it off, followed by Gardner and Jeter. got a note and I don't know when to use it. This is the probably the, the time I should. But once I tell you you'll know why I'm a little nervous about saying it. The Yankees have not had a pitcher hit a home run in interleague play. Did you know the last Yankee pitcher to homer. Was pre DH. OK now I can finish. Lindy McDaniel. September 28 1972 off Mickey Lolich at Tiger Stadium. Three straight strikeouts now for Hamill. Lindy McDaniel had a big high leg kick. One thing I remember about Lindy McDaniel. Okay. And then Rick Roden, while with the Yankees, actually DH'd at least once. Here's Gardner. Another note that's kind of head scratching I guess it's still fairly early though Cubs are only 42 games in Yankees have played 43 Cubs have a better run differential even though they're 12 under 500 and the Yankees are three over Cubs are minus three the Yankees are minus eight go Cubs, figure Cubs have a better run differential than a whole bunch of teams and, and a number of teams that are near the top of the standings and very similar story last year. Winning the blowouts and losing the tight mm. ones. Yeah, Long run for Castro, and he'll get there for the out. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I tried to build a case last year early when the run differential was so close. Hey, maybe this club is going to turn things around, and it never, never really happened. Make sure you check out our WGN baseball blog, WGNTV.com. It's sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent, serving the area for 36 years to join the nation. Contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. You missed our great minor league reports. Check them out. Thanks to Randy Wayhofer. 
Robbie Aaron, Wayne Randazzo also have info on hot stove cool music coming up on June 20th. And game notes for tonight as well. I'll be over at Metro right across the street on Clark. It's kind of Jeter's game right there. When he first came into the league, the book on him was, hey, you got to pitch him in. You can, you can jam him. He just tries to shoot the ball the other way. Well, clearly he was able to make the adjustment on the inside pitch. A lifetime 312 hitter. He went around. See, it's going to be a few raindrops here. Hopefully, nothing more than that. That's high. So, hot stove, cool music. Make sure you check it out. This will be a can't miss. We've got John Starrock from Wilco, Tom Morello, Rage Against the Machine. We've got Scott Lucas, Eddie Roger from Ridge Overkill, Jimmy Chamberlain, formerly of Smashing Pumpkins, going to be great. There's a line drive, base hit to right for Jeter. It's kind of been his happy zone as a big leaguer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was just a little half swing. But yeah, that's the stroke he's had since he came into professional baseball, the ability to hit the ball the other way, and then he learned how to adjust to the ball in. That's an approach a lot of good hitters take. Look away, react in. He's been able to exploit that right center alley a fair bit over the years. Closing in on Carl Yastrzemski for fourth all-time in hits for an American leaguer. All time interleague hit leader, number 357. When we saw Ellsbury, he was swinging the bat pretty well. He's in a bit of a funk now, last couple of weeks, hasn't done much. Jeter in his prime, certainly capable of stealing a bag, not so much anymore. Few fans now heading for cover as Jeter takes off for second. The pitch is a strike. The throw is high, and he's in. I swear I wasn't lying. I swear to you, I was not lying. That's his first stolen base. As if to refute what I just said, he yeah. goes ahead and takes second base. Number 349 in his career. Hamels 0-2. We'll do it again. Oh, lightning. Look at everybody's attention. A big lightning strike out over the lake, it looked like. Yeah. And there's the numbers on uh, the new Yankee. First month, 346 hitter. Last 13, just a buck 11. A little rumble of thunder joins that lightning. Sooner or later, we're going to get something. Late swing, strike three to end the inning. Bottom three, scoreless.
but you remember 1979 May 17th 45 oh, runs combined it is gone oh I thought he hit the other one high that one's in Milwaukee there's a high fly to left look out now look out it's gone it's a home run by Schmidt oh brother the Phillies lead in this ball game by a score of 23 to 22. Lou, the three and two pitch. Lou and Jack Schubert with the right home run calls. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Soriano's got to play this one on a hop. Whoop. And John Baker just blew out a tire around first base, and the rain really coming down now. Maybe close to a delay. I don't think that was rain induced, but if I was John Baker, I'd blame it on the rain. Well, maybe thing it was. Yeah, the base was at least slipped on the base. I thought it was a, the step after the bag, but indeed it was that slick bag that caused that tire to kick out on him. We'd hate to have a long delay here with the starting pitchers only in the third inning. As Hamill will try to lay down a bunt, he does. McCann will retrieve and get the out at first. Can't do it any better than that. Just a beautiful bunt. We'll go two to four. So I pulled up the box score on that. Yeah, uh, that I did crazy too. game back in '79. The starting pitchers combined to work two thirds of an inning and allow 11 earned runs. Randy Lurch for the Phillies won a third of an inning, as did Dennis Lamp for the Cubs. There was some carnage, boy. Your totals now the Phillies 23 runs 24 hits two errors 15 left the Cubs 22 runs 26 hits two errors seven stranded Larry Boa had five hits Gary Maddox had four he went four for four Pete Rose three for seven Schmidt with the big home run Tim McCarver pinch hit in that game. Seven to six after an inning. The Phillies dropped an eight spot in the third. Mike Kruko charted that game, said he got carpal tunneled. <laughs> Old Buckner went four for seven with seven RBIs. Well, Chopper foul. If he was charting the game, it's likely that he was scheduled to pitch the next day, and I might have called in sick after watching 45 runs go up on the board. Well, he did not pitch the next game. Ken Holtzman did and suffered a 9 5 loss. He had a complete game. Nine innings, 13 hits, nine runs. Lost to John Candelari. What happens after a blowout like that when you, your starter only goes a third of an inning, you have to lean heavily on the bullpen. The responsibility falls to the next guy to, to hang in there, and even if he's giving it up, he's got to pitch some innings. That's above and beyond going nine. So it must be we have a forecast that says this the shower is gonna blow on through before some heavier stuff comes in behind, and they're gonna try to play through this. Paused by Tanaka before the pitch, and it gets through the five hole of McCann and allows Baker to advance now to third. And passed ball on the catcher. Yeah, that'll be changed because yeah. that splitter was in the dirt. Yeah, we'll just change a wild pitch. Um, but still, a ball that McCann should block. He knows what Tanaka does with that split finger pitch, and you have to anticipate it in the dirt. Well, he's bringing it pretty good right now. Good chance for Bonifacio. Infield in. Two and two count on him. Here it is. Base hit. Cubs lead as they. Finally score against Tanaka and the Yankees.
Tanaka has been up with some of his offerings. This one tumbles up there about belly button high. Good solid contact by Cub hitters here the last couple of innings. Well, the forecast was tricky tonight because it looked like the best chance of rain was later in the evening. Because it wasn't raining around seven o'clock, got to start this one on time. Prefer not to play a doubleheader tomorrow. Cubs already have a couple of makeup uh, doubleheaders later on this season, and those are with div divisional opponents, St. Louis and Cincinnati. Got one here against the Nationals too. A lot easier to get those in. Trying to find a mutual off day, and of course, if this one were rained out, they'd try to play two tomorrow. Pitch to Lake. How about that swing? Yep. What do we call I'm that? Not, I'm not sure. I think he was trying to take a page out of Bonifacio's playbook. He shows bunt, and then he's just going to try to punch it. Wow. This is. That was something special right there. At that big hole on the right side, he's just trying to exploit it. Trying to play a little pepper. Ground ball to Shara will take it to the bag after looking at second. See, that's the other thing the shift does. Not only does it, it work against the tendencies of the hitter, but it gets in the hitter's head a little bit to maybe it takes him out of his game where he sees that big old hole over there and he says, well, I'm going to try to do something that. He otherwise wouldn't try to do and I'm not saying it's a bad idea to try to shoot that ball through the hole. But sometimes when you as a hitter when you start to think. And you don't just react. Bad things happen. <laughs> His teammates are having some fun with it though. Especially for a guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. One ball, no strikes. And Rizzo. Cubs leading one nothing here in the third. Then a big piece of uh, McCann. The lower right leg. Junior saying, "No, I meant to do it." Let me show you how to do it, Willie. Really. Good tweets after our Southwest Wrigley moment. William Rivera said he still has a scorecard from that game. Sam Swan says, I remember watching that game in New Mexico on WGN. I could forget 23 to 22. Side Castro on deck. And what, what would be the uh, analogy for football? Would it be uh, like in the 80s, like 81 to 79 or something like that? Yeah, probably. There it is. There's a break in the sky. Here comes Rodan. We need that little pocket of blue sky to. Move south a mile or two. 
Playing through it right now. Dana DeMuth has shown no inclination to uh, delay this game, and now oh, Rothschild will come on out with the Yankee interpreter. Oh, yeah. Anytime you see a second person, I thought it was a trainer. I thought there may be something physical going on with Tanaka, but I think Rothschild wants to talk to Tanaka about the condition of the mound, whether he's slipping and sliding out there or not. Yeah, I think that's what Larry's well, telling. They got a big investment in this guy, and all these teams do in their in their players. So they're worried about you know him slipping and hurting his arm. Roger Baird, the head groundskeeper, will bring out some help, and they'll. You know what they say about him? What's that? He can really rake. Yeah. Visit the Cubs Authentics auction page every Sunday night for your chance to own one of a kind game used Cubs items. This week's auction will feature those great 1937 Cubs throwback uniforms worn this past Sunday. Go to Cubs.com slash authentics to bid on these jerseys and other unique game used items. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. A short two gamer, then they'll head to the south side to play the White Sox for four. And the Cubs have a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the third inning. Three and two on Rizzo. Bonifacio, who drove in the run, is at second. Here it is. Off the plate outside, ball four. We'd love to hear from you via email, LennonJD at Tribune.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Well, Tanaka is get toolable right now. A couple hard hit balls in the second. Good swings here in the third. Rizzo works the walk. He's left some pitches up in the zone a little bit. Have to take advantage of him before he gets locked in. For a great shot, doesn't it? But it usually means there's a lot of weather in the area. That is definitely the case tonight. Look at the splits on Tanaka. He's been better against left handed hitters than righties. He's hitting 206 against him. Right, he's 221. Five of the seven home runs he's allowed have been to right handed batters. Tougher pitch to make that split finger if you're trying to go away. The right handed hitter for a right handed pitcher, that's just a tougher pitch to execute. So there's a tendency for that ball to drift in a little bit and then. The other explanation likely he just changes his pitching pattern too because he doesn't trust his splitter as much against right he's probably throws more sliders and. That's not as good a pitch for him as the, the splitter and if he hangs it. Bad things can happen. The 2 1 to Castro. Now it's 2 and 2. Where you really have to be willing to shorten your stroke. RBI situation an unpredictable pitcher on the mound.
Long inning here for Tanaka. Comes with two hits, a walk. And finally, a run against New York. Roberts to Teixeira for the out. Well, New York style, Chicago style, what sort of pizza do you like? Well, we'll talk about it, maybe try some when we come back. One nothing comes. Be the executive club at Wrigley Field. Your guests will enjoy an all-inclusive top-shelf bar, gourmet food in this high-end space. Center for stretch celebrities, former Cub players will stop by. A great time will be had by all. For information, contact the Premier Sales team at 773-404-4200 or cubs.com slash sweets. Mark Teixeira, 0-2. Worried about Jason Hamill, very first batter of the game, whacked that comebacker off of his pitching hand, and had a shot of it swelling up a little bit. You could see the imprint of the stitches on his hand. But after one very errant, how you doing, warm up pitch, he has settled in nicely. And that fastball up to 94 miles per hour. Just 15 games last year for Teixeira, right wrist problems that ultimately led to surgery. Yankees got him on an eight year contract prior to 2009. Five time Gold Glover, three Silver Sluggers. He's been an All Star twice. Product of Georgia Tech. Three and two. Both playing shallow right in the shift, and that ball fouled at the plate. The first, third, second, short from right to left. Foul by a couple of feet.
got him on the swing for his fifth strikeout. Cubs baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Talked earlier about Tanaka and his split finger pitch, and the Cub hitters having a hard time recognizing. Same thing here with the Yankees in the slider from Hamill. Good late, tight breaking slider, and he's gotten a lot of bad swings on it. Down the middle on McCann. One ball, one strike. Fly ball to left. Junior Lake right at the edge of the warning track for the out. And Soriano for the second time. Talk about the, uh, the resumes of these Yankee players, the veteran guys, all the all star appearances, and the big salaries. Of them. Who picks up the tab when these guys go out to dinner? I got it. You're only making 15 million. Let me get this. As I mentioned, Beltran, Sabathia. They're on the DL. Michael Pineda's out. Uh, Ichiro's on their bench. Yeah. Yeah, so with the money they spent this winter and given that it's a very winnable American League East that they're in I suspect they're going to be pretty active at the trade deadline. Yeah. Two and one. Soriano hit 181 home runs as a Chicago Cub. He's now the only player ever to have a thousand hits. 500 runs 500 RBIs 100 homers and 100 steals in each league. Two and two. See a Ramos with a hundred twenty seven outside. Show me fast active players, by the way. Is all over, but no play. Now most right handed pitchers try to get Soriano out with sliders away. That's what that fastball up and in was to set that up. You got to be careful though if you leave it in the zone. It's not one of those guys, just anything with spin gives him problem. It's the one that's running off the plate down and away that he'll chase. And speaking of home run hitters at Wrigley Field, there was a little sit down before the game today with uh, Mr. Jeter and Mr. Banks and along the first base yeah. side. It was something they've been trying to put together for a couple of years. Last time the Yankees were in town, Jeter was hurt. That had to be an interesting conversation. Mr. Cub and Mr. November. He's got way under this one. And Bonifacio in center will make the catch. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Cubs one, Yankees nothing.
And then it's off to San Diego for the weekend. Four there, then three in San Francisco. Followed by a series in Milwaukee. Ford, go further than any one of Ford's many fuel efficient vehicles. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at local Ford stores. Dot com. Giordano stopping by with uh, some Chicago style personal pizzas. Oh yeah, sausage with the sausage with the sauce on top. That's how you do it. That ball laced into the left field corner by Luis Valbuena. He is two for two. Both hits are doubles tonight. First one to the wall in right. This time he goes the other way. For a leadoff double. Tanaka again that splitter this time tumbles up there in a pretty hittable spot for Valbuena. So you get this uh, see this cool t-shirt too. You can get a shot of that hand wide fold yeah. this. The official pizza of the Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Field. Two thin layers of dough with cheese and ingredients inside, baked like a souffle. And their famous stuffed pizzas can now be shipped nationwide at Giordano's.com. Yeah, see, with Jeter being honored here tonight, I thought maybe he'd get a lifetime supply of deep dish pizza. He can eat more pizza now that he's going to retire. I think last year when he was hurt, the, the, the tabloids in New York had a big blow up about he was gaining weight. He said the captain was putting on pounds while he was rehabbing. Yeah. Get him over, get him in would work just fine here. To get him over part. We'll go four to three. To get him in falls to Mike Holtz. Thank you, no doubt will pull the infield in. Contact here is paramount. The strikeout candidate, and he punched out in the second inning. Yeah, he was uh, baffled by the split finger pitch last time from Tanaka. We'll see if Tanaka continues to attack with that. A cutter oh. there for strike one. That's in a tough spot. So here, here's, even though it's a home run hitter, and half of his hits are home runs. This situ oh my goodness, the sky just lit up. Well, everybody on the field wow. did a double take. Anyway, you've got to be willing to shorten your stroke here. There's a base hit. Valbuena trots home. It's two to nothing. There's the get him in part of the formula. Cashing in that leadoff double, so important. You don't want to have to pass the baton to that next guy with two outs. Obviously, a lot easier to get him in with the infield pulled in or a sacrifice fly. Would have gotten the job done as well, but a little, a little gravy for Holt. Not only does he get him in, he gets himself a knock. Pitch to Baker misses outside. Cubs lost to Tanaka three to nothing in New York, now leading two nothing. Looking to win three in a row for only the second time this year. And you know the headline writers are. Thinking, boy, wouldn't it be ironic? Tanaka, who hasn't lost in such a long time, would end up losing here to the Cubs. Currently, have the worst record in baseball.
A lot of baseball yet to be played, however. Assuming the guys don't completely open up. 3 0 to Baker, the pitcher Hamill on deck. Strike oh. called. Cleveland leading Detroit five to two tonight after beating the Tigers five to four in ten innings last night. You heard about the, the odyssey the Tigers had, yeah. right? They had plane issues in Boston after the Sunday night game. Had to stay overnight in Boston. They got to the ballpark in Cleveland about three hours before the first pitch last night. And had their 11 game road winning streak snapped. Indians with that lead on Verlander tonight. Hit well out in the deep left center. Ellsbury's got to play it off the 368 sign. Alt on his way to third. He'll be held there by Gary Jones. Baker with two hits tonight. Boy, two very impressive swings of the bat. Line drive off the wall and right. Last time held to a single because he slipped going around first base. This time. He gets his two bagger as he shoots one off the wall in left center. Infield in again with the pitcher at the plate, runners at second and third. He bunts, safety squeeze. Tag applied. He's out. Alt did not get a great jump there. I don't know if Hamill did that on his own or not. Yeah, if he did, I think you know. I think he tipped his hand a little early, even, even for a safety squeeze. He kind of let it be known early on what his intentions were. Played by Tanaka. So they're at first and third. Here's Bonifacio. Two nothing Cubs. He bunts. And the flip, and how about that by Tanaka? With two outs in the inning, he knew he had no shot at Bonifacio, so he just flipped to McCann, who tagged Baker to end the inning. Wow.
here in the area the last couple of innings Clay Cook from the Zach Brown band will conduct our seventh inning stretch a little later brought to you by Budweiser the official beer of Major League Baseball great times are waiting grab some buds Wow, yeah. Reacting to that lightning. Well, key inning here. The fifth. And make this a, an official game. John Hervis Salarte. Strike one. Look at the numbers. You could argue he should be hitting near the top of the order, especially against right-handed pitching. He's got an OPS better than a thousand against righties this year, hitting 325. How about the end of that last inning? Yeah, that was. I don't know if I've ever seen that. If it worked, the uh, the slogan would be "Killing me softly." I've been able to produce runs with those two bunts, but Tanaka up, up to the task on both occasions. Hamill strikes out Solarte. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Cubs.com for details. Yeah, the bump by Bonifacio was a sweetheart of a bump, but it's always a risky play with a man on third base. You're bunting for a hit here. He doesn't know exactly what your intentions are. And it turned out where the only option for Tanaka was to go home. I think that's a better play if you've got more speed down there at third base. Yeah, if you're a Bonifacio, you're thinking, man, I just got myself a hit, knocked in a run. What? He threw to the plate? Fouled off by Roberts. Territory in the bullpen. Ah. Uh, Buena and Rizzo collide, and nobody gets it. Not an easy play, but a play that should have been made, and probably by Valbuena. He had a much better angle. Looks like at the last he tried to come in and take charge, but I don't think Anthony ever heard him. Rule of no play, no error charge. That's one where Valbuena, he's got to come in screaming. He's got to commit early and just as loud as he can run Anthony off that ball. Lake back. Only cost him a pitch. Yep. Two outs. We'll bring up the pitcher, Tanaka. Nice recovery by Jason Hamill. First batter of the game, Brett Gardner. And a screamer back at him. It hit his pitching hand. His first warm up toss after that. Missed the plate by about 20 feet. And they were scrambling in the bullpen, but he said, No, I'm going to finish the inning. He did, and he's still in there here in the fifth, leading 2 0. Yeah, the only other base hit he gave up was a little half swing line drive to right field by Jeter. Short right, Sherholtz underneath. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 2 nothing Cubs.
see the starting pitcher lines and waited toward the Cubs here as opposed to the last time we saw the Yankees when the Cubs were shut out by Tanaka and company. Start something special with great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or visit your local Honda dealer. Doug Stanton, our associate producer, wearing a bright shirt, so we can't miss him. Comes out hitting the Yankees six to two as Junior Lake will dig in. Tough night for Junior so far. Struck out first time up, and last time grounded to first, and a bat which saw him try to fake a bunt and split his hands and punch the ball through the hole on the right side. Field holding up very well. It has been raining. For almost an hour. Make those plays by Tanaka last inning that much more impressive doing it on a wet field. Johnny Cueto finally gave it up. Six Ernie's in five and a third. The Reds are getting thumped pretty good by the Nationals, nine to two in the late innings. Cueto's ERA soaring to 1.86. Big swing and a miss, strike three. The Cubs invite you to take advantage of free remote parking and shuttle services on night and weekend games. The remote parking lot is located at 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Strike out in a walk for Rizzo. Wind has shifted a little bit. Now blowing more right to left. It was out of the southwest when we started. Right now, really out of the south. Maybe the fastball one and two. Maybe, maybe not. We'll get a look at it on our pitch tracks. Well, I'll have to play it a little bit. Rizzo's got a very keen eye. Ouch! Did that hit him? Time. <laughs> what? I uh, guess it hit his bat. It wouldn't. It looked like it hit him in the leg, didn't it? I thought it did. I guess he got a piece of it. Yeah. I got a little pizza sauce in my eye. It's hard to see. No, I hit, I hit him in the. Wait, that, that's got to be an optical both. illusion. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going with both. I'm going with just a got a George little piece of it. saying the same thing. Leg. And if, if Rizzo did not make contact with a bat, he should be out. I think he got. I think he got a little piece. I think he got a little piece and then hit his leg. I didn't hear that it hit the bat, but maybe it did. If it hit the bat, it's no, it's a foul ball. If it didn't, it might have just hit the bat. Strike. That's that's a strange, strange play. Huh. And they're going to review it. Uh, the Yankees are challenging. Yeah. Well, it, it's going to be hard for the umpires to determine exactly what happened here. Is this a challenge or is this just a uh, I'm going to ask Dana DeMuth. No, nope, it is a replay. 
This will give us time to eat some fine Giordano's pizza. That shot looks all leg, doesn't it? It just looked like it hit him in the leg. And I think Ricky's also asking, what is the challenge? We got some tweets on this uh, note we had earlier. The active home run leaders at Wrigley Field. This is the all time list. No surprise, it's Sammy, Ernie, and Billy are at the top. And a couple of former Cubs leading the way on the active list Ramirez and Soriano. So on the review, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know how definitive a look they're going to be able to find that will show that it conclusively did not hit the bat. Yeah, well, we had one the other day on a tag play where uh, we thought there was not conclusive evidence, but they overturned it. So and that's the me is the most interesting question about this whole replay thing. With, with what degree of certainty must there be before they overturn the call on the field? Yeah, they're not challenging balls and strikes. They're challenging whether or not the ball hit the bat. If it did not, it's a strikeout. Yeah, and then you have to replay it from that point. So Rizzo can take off the first base. Roll the ball Actually, to the backstop. Because I, once it hits you, it's a dead ball. Good try, yeah, though. That's no fun. <laughs> Apparently, that is not reviewable. So, no challenge. But they talked to New York, and that play is not reviewable. So now, Joe, this this would be funny if he just started screaming at the umpire. Well, since I can't challenge a review, I'm going to scream at you because I didn't like the call. He's getting reassured that he still has his challenge. I guess I would also wonder why it's not reviewable, but. You know why? Because I, I guess it's just not covered here. Uh, looking at the, what managers can challenge as Rizzo eventually strikes out. Batter hit by pitch, you can challenge, but that's not what he was challenging. I mean, he was challenging. Did he swing? Was it a foul? Yeah. Was the bat? swing and a miss, or was it a foul ball? Yeah. And so I guess it's not a hit batter; it's a strikeout. Well, we had one in the very first series in Pittsburgh where that was the challenge, where there was a foul foul ball. I think Sherholtz batting. I don't remember. And they did review that one. It was uh, or Marte, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Starling Marte. Tanaka fastball at 91 miles an hour showing a little life up in the zone though. He's got some swings and misses up there. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Tanaka fans the side, but he's trailing two to nothing.
Eric Jeter. He was born in New Jersey, but went to Kalamazoo Central High School in Michigan. And he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer, the captain here at Wrigley Field for the final time. How about that? Four for the dramatic, homered on his 3,000th hit. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Phil Nevin, Paul Shuey, a fellow by the name of B.J. Wallace, Jeffrey Hammonds, Chad Matola, all drafted before Jeter in 92. Six clubs wish they had a mulligan. Nevin went on to have a nice career. Shuey and Hammonds, you know, they're good players. This guy's been able to accomplish. Yeah, the day he got his 3,000th hit, he had five hits that day. The homer came off David Price. Oh. Two and one on Brett Gardner. That'll find the left field corner. I was just going to say the two nothing lead feels. Somewhat comfortable because of the way Hamill's been dealing, but it's only a two run lead. And they're at the top of their order here. Jeter coming up with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. Shortstop number two, Derek Jeter. And fouled off. Well, what a, what's it like to be Derek Jeter? <laughs> off the team bus today. Don't push now. Tell one of your teammates after about five minutes, call me on my cell phone. Another foul ball. Let me see if he cracked his bat. Well, as players get older, the bat speed slows down a little bit, and they have to cheat a little bit more to get to the fastball. He's been jammed by a couple inside heaters here from Hamill. May be vulnerable to the breaking ball if he indeed is thinking about trying to get to an inside heater. Turned away and did not swing. We'll send out a big uh, shout out to Hank Smith watching us tonight. Cleveland, Tennessee on WGN America. Hey, it has stopped raining. For now, wind has shifted again back to the southwest, blowing straight out to center. Just missed outside. And a slider, and it's two and two. Had a notion, but able to check. Good pitch by Hamill. James Russell is up with the watchful eye of Lester Strode. Two, third, second, nobody out.
Another 3 2 and a bouncer up the middle will be picked up by Castro. Partners now it's third with one out. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Cubs leading by two, but the Yankees have a runner at third with one out. Friendly confines tonight. Dry at the moment. That's the good news. See if we can sneak this one in before the heavy stuff comes. Kobe Ellsbury, Babe Ruth, Louis Tiant, Wade Boggs, Roger Clemens, Johnny Damon, Kevin Euclid. Catching the connection. The all treason team. One time they wore the Red Sox uniform and then the Yankees. Proving that for the most part that rivalry exists more in the minds of the fans than the players. Over the years, there have been some heated battles between those two clubs. Pedro Martinez throwing Don Zimmer to the ground. Little blooper. Castro makes the catch. Gardner's got a hold of third. Nicely done. Two outs. Now, big out recorded here by Castro with a very dangerous left handed hitter coming up, switch hitter, but obviously with Hamill on the mound to share from the left side. This ball drops in. Ricky Renteria may have made the move to the bullpen to turn to share around. Yeah, my favorite anecdote may be the uh, after Luis Gonzalez beat the Yankees with that base hit off Rivera in 2001 to win the World Series. He was in Boston that winter, walked into a restaurant, got a standing ovation for being the guy who oh, beat yeah. the Yankees. Field back and in the pull shift against Teixeira. He turns away from a high fastball. Well, we had a little fun. Uh, Going to break in our open with the uh, Star Wars music, the Evil Empire. Remember that line? Mm hmm. Is that Larry Lucchino? Dropping that on the uh, on the Yankees. Yeah, and that's the, the amazing thing about Jeter's popularity. You know, playing for all those championship teams for a franchise that is respected but not beloved around the country, because after all, they are the Yankees. And they're going to get on the board on Teixeira's two out single. Hamill not happy with himself. But you don't hear any really, you know, Derek Jeter haters out there. Oh, I'm sure if you go to Fenway, you could probably find yeah, a couple. Might find a couple. <laughs> Just because here comes Rick Renteria with McCann due up. Well, Hamble's battled hard. He's hung in there tonight. He's been really good tonight. Renteria out there, very animated in this conversation with Hamble. I think he was telling him, "I'm not taking you out of here. Don't, 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 don't read me the wrong way here. He's coming out to check on you." You can understand if Hamble thought that maybe the move was going to be made with left-handed slugger coming up. A lot of times you see a pitcher will turn his back to the manager because he doesn't want to show him up, but he'll start muttering loudly, don't you do it, don't take me out of this game.
one and one. Congrats to Megan and Lucas Schultz. They got married on Sunday and they'll beat the uh, game here tomorrow for their honeymoon. Congrats. It's Justin Grimm and James Russell. And as we said, uh, one thing about Lester Strode's eyes, they're watchful. I always say they're under the watchful eye of the bullpen coach. Renteria has allowed Hamill to stay in the game for McCann. Grim perhaps for Soriano. I'm pretty sure the manager did not tell Hamill to work around McCann. Three and one, he'll try to get back in it here. And missed the outside mm. corner. First walk, and it looks like final walk of the night for Hamill. It'll oh. be Justin Grimm against Soriano. On a night we weren't sure he'd make it through the first because of that comebacker. Solid effort for Hamill, two outs in the sixth when he departs with the lead. Facing Soriano with two on and two down, and the Cubs only leading by one now. A potential win hanging in the balance here for Jason Hamill. Grim is kind of interesting because you know his issue has been with his control this year. Twelve walks in eighteen innings or eighteen and two thirds innings of work for for Justin. At times he's been critical of his approach, saying he should be more aggressive. But I'm not sure that's the right approach with Soriano. Right to Alt, he'll step on the bag. So that worked. One pitch and the third out. They get one. It's two to one.
weekend Cubs fan camp. I'm ready by AJR. Luis Valbuena with basically no shortstop. As the Yankees were shifting, he's got three hits. Hey, he showed the ability to go the other way last time when he doubled down the left field line. Goes bunt, pulls it back, slaps it through the hole. And now let's see. Solarte again will head over to the other side of the bag. Jeter now basically playing third. It's interesting. Derek Jeter has played one position his entire career, shortstop. But how can you call him a shortstop right now? This is his 2,581st career game at short. So he needs two more appearances to tie Louis Aparicio for second on the all time list, trailing only Omar Vizquel. But once he passes Aparicio without appearing at another position, he'll have made the most appearances at shortstop ever without playing another. Position. Oh, and two yeah. on Sherholtz. Yeah, he has DH'd a few times, but we're talking right. about positions Defensive. in the field. Yeah. You wouldn't want to play Sandlot ball with Jeter because he'd never let you play shortstop. Come on, man, let me play shortstop. No way. I'm Derek Jeter. Called. By the way, the Brewers got shut out tonight in Atlanta as it starts to rain again here. Julio Tehran went the distance, five nothing. The final, he beat Giovanni Gallardo, and the Brewers' offensive woes continue. Figured Tehran would bounce back with a good one. He was not good last time out. Base hit right field on an 0-2. Valbuena makes the turn. And the throw late. They're at the corners with nobody out. Made sure Holt's struggling to get his average up over 200. 0 for 2 prior to this swing of the bat. He was down in the count. But he stayed back nicely. When it goes first to third, and the Cubs with a great chance to get that run back that the Yankees scored in the top half. See what the league has done, see what the Cubs have done, and the Yankees pitchers in this situation. Hits it in the air. Is it deep enough? Valbuena ready to tag. Gardner makes the catch. Valbuena on his way to the plate. Throw will be cut off by Teixeira. Throw to second. Gets into center. Sir Holtz will head to third. Yankees got a little greedy there. Three to one. A high towering shallow fly ball. Gardner drifting a little bit to his left as he catches it, so he wasn't in the best throwing position. Doesn't have a great arm anyway. So Shear tries to hurry that throw to nail Shearholtz at second, and he'll be charged with an error. Let's 
Second RBI of the night for Michael. Field in. Baker in the eighth spot has two hits and has scored a run. Bounced foul. Going on at the top of the batting order for the Cubs tonight, but from the five spot down, it's been a pretty good show. Inside, Chris Davis, three homers tonight in the Orioles' 9 2 pounding of the Pirates. Ryan Kalish on deck in the pitcher spot. Barry will make the catch. Sherholtz will trot home. Four to one. At the back sack flies a boy. What a night John Baker has had. How good has he been tonight? He's pumped. All three times, single, double, and now there's line drive, sack, fly. Yeah, I know it's been frustrating for him. He's basically playing every fifth day, catching Hamill, and by far his best offensive performance of the year here tonight. Chris Coughlin, pinch hit with two outs, nobody on. Cubs leading four to one. One of two left handed bats on the bench tonight. I mean, Ryan Kalish, you saw Kalish was originally out there. Or Ricky Renteria, I'd have been attempted to send Travis Wood up there or maybe even let Grimm take this at bat because he's playing with a short bench. He's only got four bench players. Two outs, nobody on. Ooh, 95 from Tanaka. He was shown the ability to. Find a little something extra at times tonight. Bounced up there. Jeff Samarja will take the ball tomorrow and he will be the major league ERA leader. Johnny Cueto giving it up. Yeah. yeah. Six earned runs tonight. He took the loss in Washington. And his ERA now 1.86. Samarja at 162. So for the first time this year, Tanaka allows more than three runs in a start. Swing and a miss to end the inning. The Cubs add on and lead four to one at the end of six.
couple of doubles, couple of runs. Cubs leading four to one. Ryan Schlitter will now work here in the seventh. Well, Justin Grimm came in, got one out, but it was a very important out. Soriano up and a couple of men on base. Now Schlitter takes over with a two and one record, a 2.95 ERA. He's on for the 19th time. Bullpen has been pretty darn good of late. In support of a real nice stretch of starting pitching too. Hamill outstanding again tonight. Last time out, Jason struggled a little bit, but this is more typical of what we've seen from him all year long. Harvey Salarte will start it. The Cubs will shift to the right against him. Great to have with us Clay Cook from the Zach Brown Band, who uh, did a wonderful rendition of our national anthem tonight. And uh, Clay, you and uh, your mates will be here on uh, September 13th at Wrigley Field. Yes, sir. Looking forward to that. Yeah, we're Chicago has been always been so nice to us. Did great, very gracious crowd. And, Really into it. Great music town here, you know. It really is. How about playing this place? Oh, I, I can't <laughs> even. And the tapper, the Schlitter will pick it up and get the uh, out. It's beautiful, you know. It's really, really beautiful. But I, I think all the history that's here, and uh, from what I understand acoustically, this place just sounds amazing as well. Yeah. Will be part of your great American road trip tour, which actually starts in Lincoln, Nebraska this Saturday. That's a long tour. Well, you know, you you got to got to make money sometime. That's right. <laughs> uh, tickets will go on sale for the uh, Wrigley Show on Saturday, June seventh. Go online at tickets.com. You can call one eight hundred the Cubs. One strike on Brian Roberts. So like Ichiro's on deck. Sir Holtz will make the catch on the move. Two outs. A quick one for Schlitter, who typically comes in throwing strikes. Clay, so what's your what's your favorite venue you have played so far? Is there one that stands out? They're pretty consistent for most musicians who get to play there. Red Rocks, uh, just mm -hmm. outside of Denver. Mm -hmm. It's a natural amphitheater. The the way the rocks are aligned or just the way that they are is natural. They did very little to build the amphitheater there, and I, I don't know what it is. It just sounds amazing. I saw a show there, gosh, I don't want to say six or seven years ago. And it's the kind of place where if you're there, it doesn't matter who's playing, whether it's your cup of tea or not, go, right? Yeah, yeah, so especially if you're going to see someone you love. Yeah, and it's, it, it's, it's really Wrigley Field of Music, no question about that, that's it. That's a good comparison. Yep. Kelly Johnson will be the batter here with two outs. So conversely, is there a place you guys have played where it's like, oh man, this just doesn't work? He's setting you up. Don't you? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to fall for that. <laughs> you know, one. like pitchers, there's some parts they pitch well and feel good, and other play, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't want you to throw anybody. You guys the bus. play well everywhere. I know, I know that. You guys are great. So you're from Atlanta, correct? I am. I am. Braves fan? All my life. Um, they won tonight, beat Milwaukee. So that one's over? That one is over. All right. Yeah. I, I'll take that. Former Brave Kelly Johnson. And he pops it up. All right. Get ready to sing here, Clay. <laughs> As Lake makes a catch. Clay Cook coming up with the stretch. Tonight's guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game, Zach Brown Band member Clay Cook. All right, Cup fans, let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crabs. Shame. 
Nailed it. There's Preston Claiborne for the Yankees. Pretty good numbers through 10 big league appearances this year. 1 0 with a 219. Fastball slider change. Like to throw that change up. There's an elevated heater at 90. All right, so I'm going to. I do like the quality start stat in general, but tonight is not one of those nights. Tanaka gets quality start because he gave up four runs, only three earned in six innings. Hamill went uh, five and two thirds, gave up one run, but can't qualify for a quality start because he didn't complete six. But Hamill was better, so it's it's not perfect. I admit that doesn't mean we should get rid of the stat, but no, it just helps to tell the story. Right. That's the thing, you know, a lot of people have a big problem with a quality start, but it's not like they're handing out Cy Young awards based on the number of quality starts and people are no. looking uh, at a lot more than that and you know, usually that's not anything they pay too much attention to. Tanaka's shortest start and the most runs he has allowed even though one was unearned high and pretty deep Ellsbury still on the move it's going to be over his head. And Bonifacio had three on his mind from the second he left the box, and he'll stand at third. That's a triple. At one point, he might have had four on his mind. He might have thought this one was going to blow out of here. We had that shot of the wind, oh, an inning or so ago, where we saw it blowing uh, from right to left. Now it's turning. It's blowing straight out to center field again. So this high fly ball just continues to carry for Bonifacio. Doesn't make it all the way into the seats, but he makes it all the way to third base with a leadoff triple. This is what the Cubs have been doing a fair bit of in recent games, slugging a little bit more, a bunch of doubles, occasional long ball, and here's a three bagger with Bonifacio. If you didn't have your stopwatch out at home, that was a 15 second trip from home to third base. Infield in again is Lake. That's his foul. By the way, I was asked on Twitter, uh, who would I see at Red Rocks? Uh, Kings of Leon. Fantastic. Yeah, at go. Go, go, go. You get a chance. And the Wigs opened. They were really good. The Wigs? Yeah. Power trio. Got good hair. It would have to, right? The 0 1. Oh, with nobody out, Bonifacio probably not going on contact here. Rizzo and Castro to follow Lake, so you don't want to take too many chances. And nobody out. Broke his bat as he rolled to third. Solarte will get the out at first. Tough night for Junior. Two for four, a couple of punch outs, a couple of weak ground outs. Now, with one out, Bonifacio probably is going on contact. Rizzo looks like he's going to be walked here. Birthday shout out to Justin Lubor. Mm -hmm. 
Matt Thornton, former member of the White Sox. Is he on a convenience store somewhere between here and Champaign? Stop for gas on my trip down Thornton's. for the graduation. There's a Matt Thornton's uh, gas station. Or something. Probably not him. We'll but have to ask. It crossed my mind. <laughs> Well, they issue the intention to walk, and now they'll play for two. Edward's been more of a fly ball pitcher than a ground ball pitcher. Situation where Yankees might be thinking, well, the play gets us out of the inning, so Ricky Renteria might be thinking about playing a little hit and run here. A guy like Castro you know, has good contact skills, he can go out of the zone to make contact. That's the key here at this stage of the ball game. If you're the Cubs, you're looking just, just for a way to add on, try to pad that lead. Clay Cook now in a Cub uniform talking to Rick Renteria. Well, that was James Russell. <laughs> Here's a pitch. It's a strike. Whoa. Big pitch there for the Yankees because now it makes it a little tougher for Renteria to put that play on if he was thinking about it for fear of a pitch out. He's could drop out of first tonight after the Orioles beat the Pirates. Right now identical 23 and 20 records. Luke can't be that good in Pittsburgh these days. Yeah, no kidding. 18 and 26. The 0 2. Oh, it hit him. Nowhere. Knob of the bat. Knob of the bat, yeah. He's got that bottom hand, that bottom finger off the knob a little bit, but he's able to pull it off the bat before the ball gets there. Otherwise, that might have been a broken finger and a trip to the DL. They try to go down and away, and Castro able to get a piece and stay alive. Usually, a situation where pitchers will try to throw a slider off the outside corner down towards the dirt, try to get Starlin to chase. Get off me. Wow. <laughs> uh, the bat stayed intact. Yeah, so he's yeah, he's used the, the handle just above the hands. He's used the knob. Just trying to get one on the sweet spot. I don't know. Sometimes in a situation like this, you don't mind a little weak contact. Slow ground ball be tougher to turn that double play. Two, it's low. Oh, 
Horton ready in the Yankee bullpen. He'll get Valbuena. Ramirez and Russell. One two is hit in the air and it will drop for a base hit. Bonifacio would have scored either way. The side benefit is Castro's aboard with a base hit. Cubs had enough sack flies tonight. Five to one. Good battle put up by Castro. They ultimately did try a slider and it backed up, sat over the middle of the plate for him. Didn't crush it, didn't need to. Tenth hit of the night for the Cubs. Sox, who became a Yankee, although only 20 appearances for Boston last year. There's Matt Thornton. Thornton with an ERA approaching six, and fairly hittable so far this year. League hits 313 against him and hits in seven and two thirds. His game hasn't changed. 94, 95 mile an hour heater and a slider. What a night for Val Buena. It's one of the toughest right handers in the game Tanaka. Three hits and three tries. That on base percentage up over 380. With all the walks he's taken. More action, Matt Daly up in the Yankee pen. Outside. Cubs trying to lock up their third straight win. It would be their second three game winning streak of the year. Yeah. 
Another good at bat by Valbuena finds himself in here hitters count yet again. Pulled on the ground to Shera. They get one but no chance for two as Jeter just holds it. To share out with uh, him, Schnurring, I believe. Got strained right hammy. Still barking a little bit, I wonder. He's been back a while now. But it seemed odd to me that he didn't even try to run back to first base after making the throw to Jeter. Thornton was not Thornton going to get there. there. Side on Scherholtz. Thornton played basketball and baseball in college at Grand Valley State, Michigan. It's a strike. Have struggled for much of the year. Runners in scoring position, situational approaches at the plate. Not been as sharp as you would like, but they've been good tonight, boy. But the leadoff man reaching the third, fourth, sixth, and seventh, and all four times come around to score. Side, they've hit him. Sherholtz got clipped. So the bases are loaded. And Thornton. Will be replaced by Matt Daly when we come back.
Hamill, especially after taking that ball off his hand to start the ball game. Yeah, we weren't sure if he was going to be able to stay in this game. Not only did he stay in, but he stayed in and pitched brilliantly. Five and two thirds, four hits, just the one run. An honorary quality start. Yeah, we'll see that be if you could uh, you know, add a third of an inning if you could trade. But we'll put another run and add a third of an inning and then you could qualify. Like they do with the batting leader at the end of the year if he doesn't have enough at bats. Here's Matt Daly. He's pitched four times. For the big club, no wins, no losses. Leading the RF six. Finesse right hander. Drop down. Sidewinder. Drafted free agent signed by the Rockies back in 04. He's from Mets country, Flushing, Queens, New York. This is loaded, two outs, one and one. Take a sweeping breaking ball. It's two and one. One, one out of seven. With, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Made a count though, didn't he? He usually does. He that's, actually has yeah. a single tonight. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, Half of his hits have been home runs. Side. He walked it. And it's six to one. And Alt for the third consecutive plate appearance gets an RBI. He's been managing awfully hard here in the bottom half of the seventh. So far, it hasn't worked out. Claiborne Thornton Daly. Here in this seventh inning, and the Cubs have tacked on two more runs. Charge to Claiborne. Nothing in two. Baker a little uh, baffled there. I wonder if he was asking for catcher's interference. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The two more and the Cubs lead now five runs over the Yankees.
brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best-selling brand. Check out our best-selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. It's been a fun night here at the ballpark. The Cubs welcoming in the Yankees. And, uh, yeah, it's the friendly confines, but the Cubs have been rude hosts. Is what you like to see. Trying to get a home field advantage working here at Wrigley Field before they uh, hit the road again for a long three-city trip coming up this weekend. A win tonight would get them to within two of the 500 mark at Wrigley this year. It's Russell against Gardner. Brian Schlitter won three up, three down inning, and now Russell comes the fourth Cub pitcher tonight. Nice to have multiple options from the left side against this Yankee club. Left handed thunder and some dangerous switch hitters. One more when Beltran's healthy. Strike out to start the eighth. Sharp breaking ball and Gardner just went a little too far. Sack bunt, single, and a steal, and then a ground out for Jeter. Past the mound. And Jeter will beat the throw by Valbuena. The confines friendly to Jeter here tonight. Check swing base hit in the third. Now infield hit here in the uh, top half of the eighth. When I had to do it all over again, he would have tried to barehand that ball. Swing and a miss on a slider by Ellsbury. This is a pretty good deal the Yankees have this week, right? With two here and then four against the Sox, so they just settle in for yeah, they're here much for a week. An entire week. And yeah, we were chatting with John Sterling, the uh, Radio voice of the Yankees, along with Susan Waldman, he said uh, when he was with the Braves that Ernie Johnson used to tell him about National League teams would uh, head to New York City for a week and play the the Dodgers and the Giants. Yeah, it's too bad we couldn't uh, have piggybacked the the Yankees and the Mets this year. That would have been fun. Yeah. Although not when we went because the weather was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Rather do it like the early June. I you know the Reds did it a couple of years ago. How about the Marlins last uh, their last road trip did something that you used to do all the time and nobody does anymore. They played in San Diego then L.A. and San yeah, Francisco. That was the norm. West Coast swing. Out there, come home with a nice little two and seven mark. Look in your wounds.
Russell's 2-2 two -two is a strike three called on the outside corner to get Ellsbury. Yeah, that was Chris. Perfectly placed fastball from James Russell. Ellsbury, oh, 0 for 4 tonight. Check out this pitch. Dot that outside corner. Share now batting righty. RBI single in the sixth for their only run to date. Still seeing some lightning flashes popping out in the nighttime sky over the lake. Mm, well, he's good tonight. And I think you know, we talked a lot early in the year about uh, Wesley Wright, then Zach Roscup. Joining the bullpen, providing some relief for James Russell. Not just so much to have another option that to come into games, but so many times if you're, you're the lone lefty out there, you get up a lot when you don't get into ball games just because you have to be available in case there's a pinch hitter and, and the manager has to react to it. But now that you have multiple lefties, you know, he doesn't have as many of those occasions where he's up and not into the game. And, that, and that's got to save you some bullets. No question. Also one of those guys that does not shy away from work. He'll take the ball. You know, if you ask him on a daily basis if he's available, yeah, he's good to go. But much sharper now when he's you know, been able to have some time off. Where was it? Definitely on the plate. If anything, may be down. Jeter goes on the 3 2, and it's ball four. Came back with a changeup again, and this time didn't make a good pitch. That was a fairly easy one for Teixeira to lay off. Five run lead. Chris Basio probably wishing that James were a little bit more aggressive with that one. It's over in St. Louis, 5 0 Cardinals. Adam Wainwright with a one hit shutout. Face oh. one over the minimum. Paul Goldschmidt with a double in the fourth. That was it. Oh, and two to McCann. Well, if Tony La Russa knew any secrets about Wainwright, he wasn't able to pass him on to the Diamondback hitters in time. And that uh, brave shutout over the Brewers, Giovanni Gallardo left in the fourth inning. He twisted his left ankle. He has not won since April 6th. Foul back. What else is going on in the DL these days? Not that he is, but it seems like every night there's somebody going down. The Kashner's been shut down for a while, Andrew Kashner. Yeah, uh, I guess. Uh, I think it's overly serious, but uh, he is on the DL with uh, right elbow soreness. Cliff Lee, an MRI because of an elbow. So Prince Fielder's uh, plate streak ended over the weekend. Played 547 in a row, but uh, has missed the last three. Herniated disc in his neck. And 
Inside two and two. Felix Dubrat left tonight's game for the Red Sox with shoulder fatigue. Hey, if you're a fantasy player, the Red Sox have signed Stephen Drew, so you might want to add him to your club. Probably be uh, down in the minor leagues, getting some at bats for a while. Ten point something, one year deal, paying in the rest of the way. Yes, he did not. Except the qualifying offer from the Red Sox 14.1 million. After uh, last season. So we got t yeah, about 10 10 point two. Approximately. Roll over grounder to Rizzo who flips to Russell. And that'll end the inning. Scoreless eight, six to one. Will lead off for the Cubs here in the bottom of the eighth, batting for James Russell. Daly still working for the Yankees. Laced foul the right. Little roller, nice play by Daly. They get the out. So Cash Cruth with a nice piece on the Cubs website uh, yesterday. You can easily find it on how Roger Baird and the grounds crew takes care of the Ivy. And how much work they put in to keeping it looking like that. It went in in uh, 1937. There's some dispute as to when it actually 
originally went in. It seems to be September 4th, 1937. Um, but to, to trim everything, clip the top, keep everything looking good, uh, takes about eight hours, according to uh, Roger Baird. See, if they just let the ivy grow, I mean, it would, it would cover the, the wall signs. It would be three or four rows up into the bleachers. It says uh, Roger added about 18 sprinkler heads specifically for the Ivy. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, where they replace the brick out there, uh, how long that will take to, to fill up. It was about 8 to 18 inches away from the brick wall. The leaves are about 6 to 8 inches. And they do a lot of raking in the fall. Roger said for about three weeks straight, that's all they do is rake leaves out on the warning track. Bonifacio skies out towards Soriano. So does the article say how long it will take for that to, to grow to its required height out there in left field? I don't know. No, that was not addressed. But I'll ask Roger when I see him tomorrow. I wouldn't imagine it would take that long. But with the spring we've had, I think that's why it. Yeah, it's late coming in. I guess Hank Sauer used to hide his chewing tobacco in the ivy. Who's he hiding it on? I don't know. Good question. Lou Novikov played the outfield for the Cubs in the 40s. I guess thought it was poison ivy. So he wouldn't touch it? Right. He's got a bottle of calamine lotion in his back pocket. So check out the article. A lot of really interesting details about. The vines and the ivy here at Wrigley Field. Will Ramirez getting ready, it looks like, for the ninth. And Bill Beck had seen two minor league parks that had ivy on the walls. Uh, one was in Pasadena, California, and the other one was in Indianapolis. To Sharon needs some help here with the shift, and that ball's going to drop. Uh -oh. Soriano throws behind oh the runner, and Lake will get back to first. Well, he needed something good to happen tonight. He was 0 for 4, not had any good at bats, and I really argue that this was a good at bat, but it was a good result for him. I think that ball is one Soriano's got the best chance. I'm making a play on. And then he uh, gets a little giddy, takes too big of a turn, but he gets away with it. Really couldn't handle that throw back in from Soriano. So a two out bloop gift hit for Junior Lake. Brings up Rizzo. He's been a little shaky tonight on defense. Well, that's that's the, that's kind of one of the big what ifs on the shifting too, right? The shifting is pretty much driven by ground ball results. You look at the, you know, the guy's tendency on the ground. So, well, he never hits the ball to the opposite side on the ground. So let's go ahead and shift the other way. But it does leave you short on a play like that.
foul tipped it's two and two. And got on my list. Ask Roger about the Ivy. We've got to rem <laughs> remember to ask Rizzo if he actually made contact with that ball. I'm going to say no. Statute of limitations will have run out by tomorrow morning. He can tell us what really happened. Yeah, and then the whole uh, reviewability of that play. There's a new word for you. <laughs> reviewability. Reviewability. Hey, check out that shirt. To Teixeira to end the inning. Here comes the ninth. It's the Cubs six and the Yankees one. Good. I always go back to Chicago, you know, Bay City. Spending a lot of time here. Happy that I'm back. Is there anything you miss about regular Chicago? The fans, you know, playing here. I enjoy myself playing here. And now that I'm happy that I'm back and play at least two games here. What about playing in right field? That's not what you're used to. For, for nah, yeah, team. nah. That's my first time here in this ballpark playing right field. But you know, like I always I say, the more important for me is just be in the lineup and try to help the team to win. Sorry, how good was it to see your old friends at the Cubs? You were talking, it seemed like you gave about 50 hugs to them. Yeah, it's always good, you know, see my friend. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it's like a little weird, like play against them. You know, I played for six years here, and now I play against them. It's kind of like weird because I, I just treat those guys like a part of my family. Now we had to play against him. It's like a little weird for me. Soriano and being back here in Chicago. A nice ovation when he batted for the first time tonight. Facing Neil Ramirez. That's leading six to one. It's a strike. It's two and one. Ramirez trying to fall in line with the. Spotless bullpen performance so far, and boy, he's been good. And big league games 0 and 1 with an ERA below 1. That was pretty nasty right there. Tight little slider with late break, good tilt. Got it. 
on the slider. Worked them over pretty good. Moved that last one a little further out and off, and Soriano could not lay off. So Larte is going to reach. Cubs have been shifting all night long on Solarte, so he decides to drop one down. It's, you know, you're 0 for 3, you've punched out twice. And, well, they're going to give it to me. I'm going to take a knock here. That spot, that's a smart play. Yeah, they're down five, they need base runners. My, my hunch is if he was two for three before that at bat. He's probably not bunting there. So what if Hamill's on the mound and the Cubs are thinking, OK, it's a no hitter in the ninth. Do you shift like that? And if you do, do you get angry at a guy like that if he bunts? I don't want to open that game. It's going to happen no. at some point. Right, Somebody's right. going to shift in the ninth. Yeah. Somebody's going to say, well, if you're going to give me a hit, I'll take I gotta it. got to take it, yeah. I don't think you can. I don't think you can shift there if the guy's trying to pitch a no hitter. You can't give. You can't give the opposition that, and expect them not to take it. I guess a lot would depend too on whether it made baseball sense. You know, if it's a four nothing game, no way can you second guess it if you punch. Right. If it's you know nine to nothing, then maybe. Two seamer. Put that corner down and away. Didn't get the call. He has got really good stuff. Blocked by John Baker, three and two. Late break on the slider, and he's got that sharp downer curveball. It's very difficult for the hitters to, to pick up. You know, a lot of guys kind of have that hump in their curveball. The hitter sees it out of the hand. They see it kind of go up, and they recognize breaking ball right away. His just kind of comes in on plane and then dive bombs. Fouled away by Roberts. He's had a tough time staying healthy. He's played more than 77 games in a season since 2009. Real durable before that. Over 150 games four different times with the Orioles. A roller to Valbuena. He'll get the out at first. Two down here in the ninth. And wrapping up just in the nick of time as the Lightning's making another pass by Wrigley Field. Here comes Ichiro. So Tanaka in danger here of losing for the first time in his last 43 starts. He had 
won 34 consecutive decisions coming into tonight. And in his first six in the big leagues. Facing the team with the worst record in baseball, a team that he dominated about a month ago. For the proof, you just shouldn't be betting on baseball. 47th career plate appearance for Ichiro against the Chicago Cubs, a career 317 hitter against the Cubs. Nice and easy, Hector. Ramirez is 2 0, misses again, three balls, no strikes. He ran to him, wants to make sure that if he has to make a move to Rondon, he's ready to go, but so we got a pretty comfortable lead here with two outs in the ninth. Strike call. The three one. Now it's full. Valuable experience here for Ramirez. Not a safe situation, but protecting the lead at home against a high-profile opponent. A lot of energy in the ballpark. She rolled over 4,000 hits combined in Japan and the States as he fouls off. 1,278 with Oryx in Japan. 27-63 with the Mariners and Yankees. Another 3 2 on the way and another foul. The battle here between Ramirez and Suzuki. Walked him. Just fouling off the fastball, so they opted to go with a breaking pitch and just not close enough to get a guy like Suzuki to bite. He earned his way aboard nine pitches. Chiro, not a guy who walks a ton, he doesn't strike out that much either. Looks to put the ball in play. And Rick Renteria is going to ask for his closer. And a non save situation here. The tying run is still in the dugout. And we'll be back.
lightning in the area. Starting to rain again. As the Cubs are one out away from finishing off the Yankees tonight. Two on, two down, ninth inning. Expect Roy Hobbs to come out of the dugout. It is Gardner with Jeter on deck. The tying run is Ellsbury. He's still in the dugout. Strike call. He had uh, Rondon hot and ready to go, and figures with two outs in the inning, he should be able to make fairly quick work of things here. Uh, getting Ramirez out of there, he saved a few pitches for nearly you know, through 22 pitches in his outing tonight. On Dome with saves in each of the two wins over the Brewers on the weekend. And it is starting to downpour once again. Don't gets a sign from Baker. Here's a pitch. Foul tip strike two. Figure Baker will set up right down the middle and just put that index finger down from here on out. And slide toward the outside a little bit, and it's full three and two. And then sometimes you see a catcher not even put a signal down, just hold it, glove and hand out apart about the width of the plate. So here, just throw it to me. Just play catch. Fans don't want to leave. They're getting wet, but they're standing, hoping Rondon can get this final out. Fouled away. Always a challenge for a manager. Bullpen usage. How often do you go to your late inning guys? This is the third day and four in which Rondon has worked, but he was off. Four days prior to this stretch. Another 3 2 outside to load the bases. Pulling, but not all that close. A chance for Derek Jeter, two for three with a sack bunt. A total downpour right now. We have not yet been delayed tonight. Swing and a miss. One strike on Jeter. Bases loaded, two outs. Here it is. Strike two call. Comfortable right now. 
Well, if it's a rain or the heat from Rondon as he fights it off. Yeah, and also the realization that you've got a guy out there who throws 98 miles an hour with a wet baseball in his hand. Another 0 2 on the ground to Castro. Throw to first. Cubs win. Cubs win for the third consecutive game. Rondon does not get the save, but he gets the 27th out and holds the Yankees scoreless here in the ninth. And they beat Masahiro Tanaka, who suffers his first loss as a big leaguer. The grounds crew. To put the tarp on as quickly as possible after the Cubs' 6-1 victory.